November 18, 2016, 10 days after the election. Judith Butler said, on the day after, but who are we who did not see their power, who did not anticipate this at all? Perhaps we are shielded from the truth by our own isolated form of left and liberal thinking. Or perhaps we believed in human nature in some naive ways. I have been thinking about Butler's who are we question and what it means about choosing who we work with and how. I was remembering the tone struck by Chris Marker in Sixth Side of the Pentagon, where even while filming the events from very close, he sounds a dissonant note. Not only does he not think they will levitate the Pentagon, he does not think they will win this battle. Still, Strange optimist as he is, he also makes the film, and many take it as a tabula rasa onto which to project hopes. Nine years later, in Grin Without a Cat, Marker speaks with evident love and disappointment about the failures of the left. Completed in 1977, it uses footage from the heat of anti-colonial and anti-imperialist struggles that exploded in the late 1960s. But edited at a distance, you can already start to see the fraying edges. Finally, made almost 30 years later, again, Marker's Case of the Grinning Cat. It catalogues both a joyful, mysterious cat and a set of frightening events ending with an unlikely happy ending. The National Front is defeated, but Marker seems to be suggesting this is temporary. He wonders about the basis of solidarity between the young French Algerian woman, the French Algerian woman in hijab, and the French secularists all three marching together against the National Front. Will this coalition last? Can the secular activists join forces with pious figures? And if so, for how long? February 17, 2015, a week after the murder of Diya, Yasur, and Razan, Regarding, belatedly, the pain of others. Suddenly, a 180-degree turn in media coverage of Chapel Hill killings and a goodbye to that parking dispute narrative. No more CNN Inside Edition story using the murders for a report on how to find parking spaces. Toby Rolo's tweet summed it up. The Chapel Hill shooting was about a parking space called the United States of America. Now a sea change in headlines. Turkish PM demands US treated as hate crime. Civil rights group writes letter to attorney general. International rights group demand US treated as hate crime. And finally, President Obama calls killings brutal. Could all this happen without the speed at which news now circulates across borders and rapidly brings other voices to the table? If power demands world solidarity for one moment, it may have to reckon with world solidarity, involvement, and advocacy in other moments, including those the media thought were not deaths of equal status. Global information flows are unpredictable, multidirectional, and inconsistent. The Turkish Prime Minister's call to recognize the killings as hate crimes is reprinted in Bangladesh's national newspaper. But these moments pass without introspection by Turkish or Bangladeshi public. No pause to consider their own record on non-majority populations. It may not be called Fox in those countries, but each nation has its local variant of the Reynard figure, bamboozling the origin as much as recipient. Events occur in adjacency to remind us that double standards are global, from France to Turkey to Bangladesh to America. 
every community cursed with this inversion of sight, ever larger areas of blindness. The front page of New York's two most widely read newspapers the day after the event. The death of a TV host in a car crash and the trial of the man who killed a real-life American sniper. These are the headlines. The Chapel Hill hate killings that were accelerated by the cynical environment of Islamophobia after the Paris murders is nowhere on the front page. While every violent death is a tragedy and every murder should be condemned, in the eyes of power, not every death is equal. Mona Saeed Kamal points out that we are trapped inside narrow paradigms of interests bound by the idea of the nation-state. The victim's Turkish origins brought the Turkish Prime Minister into the fray. Anirvan Chatterjee adds, Unfortunately, Michael Brown did not have a geopolitically strategic nation-state to intervene on his behalf. Is this why a generation of black radicals dreamed of back to Africa? An Africa they had never seen but imagine would come to their defense. The Muslim protagonist of violence is telescoped outward to the Borg collective-like hive mind, while others have the privilege of individual subjectivity. Hari Kunzru writes, White killer, sovereign individual, look for explanation in psychology. Brown killer, prison of ideology, blame group, November 28, 2016, the day of the Ohio State shooting. On cue, the first false flag attack of the new regime. Muslim, man, 18, green card, weapon. The utter predictability of the coming Muslim registry argument. America is exhausting. How quickly the mainstream media has normalized every aspect of the incoming regime. Smiling, kafawing gesticulating as they breathlessly analyze every cabinet intrigue as if this is just the arrival of a normal president and not someone who campaigned for a year on a platform of vicious hate. If we ever emerge on the other side of this tunnel, remember these media organs, funders and people. They who normalize this era will just as quickly switch sides again. I am for the second time in my life, scared for and afraid of America. And what is a Muslim anyway? Are you one? Am I one? It's now the 21st century's all-purpose container for every form of other, black, brown, migrant, newcomer. The statistics tell the story. 30% of American Muslims are white, 23% are African-American. 76% of Arab Americans are Christian or other religions. This is why, when we did the project Driving While Black Becomes Flying While Brown, we were already working within this inverted triangle of perception. Muslim is not an empty container. All purpose is not the same as empty, I think. Better to stay infinitely elastic. As poet Shami Ali Naim put it to me this weekend, Islamophobes don't care how pious you are. They don't even care if you're Muslim. <laughs>